All right, Jules, I don't know. Did you know that I lived in San Diego? Okay, so I did here. not know you lived in San Diego. Why did you move did. from San Diego? Why You left the West Coast to move? I do. Family's on the West Coast and everything. It's because um, a job. <laughs> New York came calling. I had to go. But, oh, you know, that broadcast life. <laughs> that broadcast life. But, you know, it's also where my, my salsa career, such as going to the salsa club two to three times a week, that's when that was happening too. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. The unpaid salsa career? The unpaid one salsa of those. career. Oh, it's awesome. I was awesome. But here's the thing. I bring up my San Diego nostalgia because our guest today lives in San Diego. I love San Diego. Loved and love San Diego to this day. So we are going, you know, full into this with, with my love for San Diego with our guest today, who is just, while our paths never crossed, did not know her. I am certain that while I was there, her little business itch, that was taking form in her mind while we were both cohabitating separately in San Diego. I'm positive. You didn't know her then, but you're going to get to know her now. And she's doing some really incredible things. Like, I mean, San Diego's fun and we love San Diego. And I'm a little jealous that today she's in San Diego and I'm not. But that's not the highlight of, of our guest. We've got some really cool things that she's going to share with us and we're just going to have a blast. Let's dive in. The Think Take of Three podcast starts now. Another episode of the Think Tank of Three alongside my co-host Julie Holton. I am Rishi, a candidate Capasuris. And our third mind of amazing is Christine McDaniel, who has done nothing short of kicking some serious butt in the realm of starting, acquiring, and selling businesses. Over 20 plus. I mean, you're going to expect her to be like 80 years old, and she is not, folks. <laughs> in fact, Christine was so successful at this whole startup thing that she was recognized in 2009 by the Small Business Administration as Person of the Year for her first company, Cleanology. In 2010, the next year, Cleanology was listed as one of the 100 most brilliant businesses by Entrepreneur Magazine. Christine decided to put the success she developed for herself to good. And now she works with others. She started the Magnolia firm and it helps business owners really grab that glass ring of selling their companies. I'm so excited to welcome Christine to the show. Hey, Christine. Hi, thanks for having me on. I'm really excited about this. Christine, I, I, I can't even wrap my mind around the ability of starting a business in my early 20s. In my early 20s, I was literally just I mean, I was doing what I was doing in broadcasting, but there is no you were way salsa was, dancing. I we was heard salsa Marisha. dancing with tequila <laughs> in one hand and my high heels in the other. And then like reporting on like the Padres, you know, <laughs> in between. But I cannot imagine the thought process of starting, developing, creating, making it work. And then, oh, by the way, let me sell businesses in my early 20s, let alone doing that over and over and over successfully 20 plus where where did this ability did this desire where did this come from for you and it's funny I was just looking at the calendar my 20 year anniversary of being a business of starting my first first company back in the day December 7th 20 2003 so it'll be a 20 year anniversary here coming up in a couple months um it seems like just yesterday <laughs> So, so yeah, that first one was, um, I mean, I was always the girl with the lemonade stands and like my whole life, I, it, I was born to do this. There's no, no doubt in my mind. It's my favorite hobby in the world. I love everything about business, eat, sleep, breathe, read, um, uh, probably drive all my friends nuts about it, but yeah, cleanology was my first business, which was just, you know, a cleaning company, downtown San Diego. And, you know, I had $300 and I, you know, started cleaning every single day for a year and a half, which is pretty crazy. And bartender at night to pay the bills. But when you're 23, that's, you know, you're willing to, you got the energy and you're going to do whatever it takes to, to get something off the ground. And I was willing to do that. You were hustling. That's what you were doing. You were hustling. <laughs> oh yeah. 
I, you know, I totally get that hustle. And, you know, I want to point out this. So I, I looked at some stats, Christine, because our audience, a lot of, a lot of women in our audience and, um, and before we get into like kind of the fun stuff, like I really want to talk about some of the serious side of building a business, scaling a business, selling a business, because it really, um, I feel like I've become as, as a business owner myself, I feel like I've become an accidental feminist in many ways, because I see what's happening and I experience what's happening to women in business. And I just want to make a difference. And so talking about it is at least one thing we can do. You're doing more than that. We'll get to that in a moment. But like, let's, so let's look at some stats comparing women entrepreneurs to their male counterparts. In the U.S., about 40% of businesses are women-owned. Women contribute, as business owners, close to $1.8 trillion to the U.S. economy. These are This is incredible. But funding-wise, remember, 40% of businesses are women-owned. Funding women entrepreneurs receive just two to three percent of venture capital funding, clearly significantly less than the male counterparts. And we could go on and on and on with these statistics that show that women build incredible businesses, but they don't get the funding. Perhaps there's a lack of support. There's also a statistic that talks about women. I think it's less than 75 percent of women even even look at or think about scaling their businesses to that $1 million milestone. And so what do these numbers say to you? What, what is, what do you, you know, speak from your experience? What do these numbers mean about women in business? Well, a couple of things. So right now there are more women starting companies than men, which is really interesting. So that's a new thing. Um, the funding issue, we have to look at the other side of it is that men just grow companies quicker, larger, faster. So those are larger companies a lot of times from the men that are getting funding versus women that are just starting out. And, and I see it in my firm. So we started with, we were women, all my clients were female and business owners. We were, we were selling. And so then we, and we, it wasn't like, I wouldn't help men, of course not. But then the guys started coming to me and like, oh, help us. Why are you only helping women? I'm like, no, well, well I'll help anybody, of course. And it was just the females coming to me in the beginning. And then we jumped up market like overnight. So from doing $300,000 transactions to $3 million transactions. And that's just the way the world is right now. You know, men have the larger companies because they've been in the game longer. And so, you know, and it's unfortunate. So now we have mostly, you know, male clients right now. Yeah, more men than females. So kind of flipped a little bit. So, so that's part of what's going on. Do you think that men are more likely than women to be pursuing these bigger, be these bigger goals, bigger dreams? I mean, Rish, we've had we've had people on the show talking about um, how women are less likely to go for a job unless they meet 100% of the qualifications, you know, versus men. I'll be like, oh, I don't know if I can do it, but I'm going to say that I can, and then I'm going to show up and try. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, it, it, like, what do you think is kind of the root cause or kind of driving force behind some of these differences? Yeah, you're exactly right, Julie. A lot of it is some sort of insecurity. You know, I think women naturally are like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if, you know, so they doubt themselves. They overthink every a lot of stuff. And what's sad is that almost it's so crazy. It's like across the board, women will come to me and they will undervalue their company. Oh, Christine, I don't think it's worth anything. I'm just going to give it to my employee. You know, I have a bunch of these stories time and time again, just recently. She 20 year business, super strong business. She's like, well, Oh, I don't think it's worth anything, or I think it's worth 50,000 or some like crazy low number. Then the men, again, I don't want to stereotype, but this is just like the data I personally have. My company's worth multi millions. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not, it's not. like, let's, 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 <laughs> no. let's, let's, let's kind of go back to reality. So, so there's just this kind of insecurity thing that's happening. I think with women, um, their value, their self-worth kind of translating to the worth of their business. It's, it's very odd. And I keep seeing it happen very frequently, which is, yeah. So I think that is part of it. I, um, I took my daughter to see the Barbie movie. I did not have the intention of going to see the Barbie movie. So the fact that I am saying this just kind of blows my mind, but I took her to see the Barbie movie and she's a little young. So a lot of it actually went over her head because it was a very strong woman message. And it really, you literally, and the Barbie movie is what I'm talking about here. Okay. Not, you know, but in this movie, they basically break down women and what women are dealing with so like in barbie land and you know 
that spoiler if you haven't seen it go see it by the way um or stream it what have you it's barbie land is all about the women women president women owners and it's not a second thought she goes to the real world and no that's not how it works she comes back barbie land's a hot mess <laughs> and america Pereira lays down a speech that basically said what you just said christine but then encompasses all facets of women and life undervaluing themselves, um, taking themselves for granted, or not even, it's not even about taking it, forcefully taking themselves for granted because they don't want to seem overbearing or they won't want to do this. Or we're trying to be perfect, but don't to be, too, all the women were sitting in fear, including myself, like when she's doing a speech, like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> because it was such an amazing message. And it's just, it blows my mind that we are still in this frame of thought in this frame of mind in 2023, where men, in general, like you said, are automatically saying, I got this, no problem. I can overvalue. It'll be fine. It'll all work itself out. And we're like, well, I don't want to go too far up that ladder because I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want anything to blow back on me that I, you know, so I'm going to, let me just under, you know, let me just go under, let me go low because it's going to be better to go low instead of just saying, damn it, I know what I'm doing. This is what the company is. This is what the company's worth. And I dare you to try and challenge me on it and let's work this out. And I think that you've you've tapped into that, Christine. I think that the fact that you have shown that not only have you started, acquired, sold all of these different businesses, you have that mindset. Now we talked briefly about the fact that you're you're part Greek, me being married to a Greek, a hardworking class of individuals and people that are just getting out there. Do you think that that is part of this? <laughs> that Greek side is just like. Damn it, I believe in me. It's the pilotemo. <laughs> I'm, I'm half Greek and half Italian. So yeah, we we uh it's definitely <laughs> common things, definitely like, and I was raised by my father. So it's like I I have more masculine energy, especially in the business world. I'll swing real masculine on that side of things. Um, still have a femininity, but it, you know, I can turn it off, turn it on when I need to. So for me, it I am confident. I know, you know, I could kick butt or whatever. That never, and I was lucky enough to be raised by a father that never said oh you're a girl you can't do that he treated me you know he had two daughters he didn't have any sons and he just taught me you know treated me like a person it was never like oh you're just a girl I've never heard that so when I went in the business world and and again 20 years a lot's changed in 20 years thank god mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know I, a little 23 year old coming to get it, land a client and they were like oh where's your business partner and what's his name I'm like, oh, ever multiple times. Like, I'm like, well, I don't have a business partner. And they're like, it's just you. You have this business on your own, but you're a girl. Like it was weird. And again, it it seems like that sounds crazy only 20 years ago, but that's what was what was happening. And it was so I always called myself a business person. It's mm -hmm. so funny. I wouldn't even call myself a businesswoman. I just was like, oh, we're all business people. And then I even was hesitant, which I did. I became the president of the National Association of Women Business Owners here in San Diego, which was tricky for me because I'm, I'm like, I don't want women to keep having these our own groups separate category yes so that's what you're doing hey we want to be treated like the guys but whoa we want our own um groups so it was always a dichotomy for me it was tricky to navigate that to be honest because i'm like well now we're separating ourselves but we want to join you know we want to be equals so I remember when general motors announced their first ce you know first woman ceo and, you know, friends were sending me the headline and they're like, isn't this amazing? Doesn't this make you feel great? And I was pissed because the headlines like GM announces first female CEO. And I'm like, that shouldn't be the headline. The headline should be who she is and what she brings to the company. And the fact that she's a woman is just, you know, that's just science. <laughs> and so, yes, I can relate to so much of what you're saying, you know, as, as a woman, obviously business owner myself, you know, still today in 2023, I'm sitting at tables full of men. You know, I just joined a new, um, a new board and I'm the only woman at the table. And, and I almost don't even notice anymore, except I, I look for it because most of the circles I'm in in business are all men. And, and frankly, ladies, like when I, you know, first start up grind Lansing, for example, you know, part of my job is to book the presenters and to bring in speakers that are going to, and so 
we're trying to make it diverse and I want as many awesome high powered women as possible. And honestly, it can be hard sometimes women who hold themselves back or just aren't as, you know, numerous in the field. Christine, I'm curious for you, what has had the biggest impact on you walking into the startup world? What keeps you coming back? Oh my gosh. It's like the challenge, the climb, the building something from scratch. Again, for someone to do 10 startups and exit them is like absolute insanity. You know, that's, you know, so out of the 20 plus, you know, 10 of those were startups that I exited and started from scratch. But it's like me overhearing, which happens a lot in San Diego, because most of the businesses were started here. And because I've been here mostly for the 20 years, uh, the, you know, just overhearing someone talk about cleanology or eco chateau. And I'm like, oh my God, I started that company. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, you know, which is really cool to overhear, right? Something I built from scratch. Um, so that that motivates me. That keeps me going. Um, you know, I always said no more startups, but then obviously Magnolia Firm is a startup. <laughs> My friends, every time I say, this is the last startup, they're like, yeah, sure, Christine, We're, we don't believe you. But uh, yeah, that's what keeps me going. When I was living in San Diego, I had a hairstylist. Um, she used to work out of her house. Um, and I remember when I went to her place, I remember noticing an unfinished room, paint splotches everywhere. She was trying to figure out what she wanted to do. She hadn't decided on which, what she wanted to do with the space. And then she kind of chuckled at me when I asked her about it. And she said, it also makes my husband nervous because basically it's telling him that there's big change coming to my life. Because every time I start working on a space, something's about to happen with me and my career. <laughs> that was her tell. That was her big tell. So having sold your companies many times over, acquired and sold many times over, I have to imagine that you yourself have a tell within that it's time to move on. It's time to let this one go. What what is that internal clock for you that says it, it's this is it's the time let's do this? Great question, and I just want to say here on the podcast I don't have kids, so this is why I have so much time. My businesses are my kids, um. So it's pretty simple answer. It's never it's never a timeline, and it's never a dollar amount ever. It's just this, and it's typically around the five year mark. It always feels like. It's at the point of the company of stability, which is what everybody wants. <laughs> I was even in Europe. I was in Europe with somebody and he's like, and we like, they didn't need me anymore at the spot it was, we were about at the four year mark, five year. And I'm like, oh my God, they just, they didn't, they left me alone the entire month because they knew I'd worked my ass off for, you know, four years straight. Don't bother Christine. She's in Europe on vacation for a month. And, and then I saw they broke the, they broke the hundred thousand dollar a month, which is like a big, you break a six figure revenue month. That's a big deal. First off, you know, second, yeah, it was the biggest month of the company. And I just was like devastated. I'm like, oh my God. And he's like, what's wrong? Like your company is running without you. It's what everybody dreams of. And I said, they don't need me anymore. And like, I'm bored. <laughs> so it's when I, it's <laughs> wait, that was it right there. I'm bored. <laughs> I'm bored. I'm like the chaos is over. Too boring. <laughs> yeah, I need the chaos. I need this. You know, actually, my team would not like me coming back from a vacay because they say I start doing all these new initiatives. They're, oh, God, here's she's back from vacay. Now she's going to start, you know, doing new initiatives and turning up the heat again because we scaled very quickly and it was pretty crazy. So, so at that, so it's when the management's in place, the systems are in place. I'm really only wearing the marketing hat because I never give that one up, but I'm not, you know, I'm there part time. And that's when, because then I start losing the passion on board and it's not fair to my clients and it's not fair to my team. So. Okay. Christine, we have to talk Richard Branson <laughs> okay. because I know but we're, we're getting tight on time. We've got, but we, ha not everyone gets to say, oh yeah, I had breakfast with Richard Branson in Paris. <laughs> so you have to share the story with, with our audience. Tell us tell us about this. Yeah. And I do have 10 more minutes. So if you guys have any other follow-up yeah. questions, but I will tell this story. So I am, um, gosh, where did I start? So years ago, this is back when I first, first started my spa. So this might've been 20, uh, I started 2012, maybe 2014, 15. He was speaking. I'm a massive fan since, you know, since in my early twenties, I've read every book and I'm a fan because he's always happy and he has all these companies and he's like, 
all so adventurous and like just loves, loves, loves what he does. And he's built such amazing companies. And so that just inspired me. I'm like, yeah, look, you can be an entrepreneur and you can have a blast. So read all his books. So I met him here in San Diego, was speaking. I got there an hour early. I sat in the front row and I wrote a check for Virgin Unite, which is his charity, which he fronts all the operating costs, which I'm always a fan of that, right? So you know your dollars going straight to the front line. Most nonprofits, you don't know where it's going. You know, it's going to a, the CEO's, you know, huge salary. So gave him a ran up on stage when he stopped speaking. Security's like taking him off. I grab his arm. Here's a check. Richard Branson, I'm your biggest fan. I love everything you do. I can't even check. I run. My business card was with it. He called the spa. I was driving home or his assistant called the spa. It was like, they passed it to me in my car. I had to pull over and his assistant's like, I have Sir Richard Branson on the phone for you. Would you like to take the call? I'm like, uh, yeah, of course I'll like take the call. And so, yeah, I spoke with him briefly and it just really moved me that he took the time. The check was small. It was a thousand dollars. Like who cares about that donation, you know? And so, uh, but he took the time to thank me and he talked to me for like 10 or 15 minutes and that stuck with me. And then fast forward, I was like, let me add a couple zeros to that check. You know, I just like doing wild stuff, you know, <laughs> like manifesting. And so I wrote this check. Um, to Virgin Unite, an actual check from my spa. And we framed it because again, I'm really big on visualization, put it in the break rooms of both of our locations, all 35, you know, employees, women saw it every day. They knew what we were going to do. I go, I don't know when we're going to cut this check. It's a big check. Like there was no way, you know, it was kind of like, oh my God, how are we going to cut this big of a check? And then I had it even in my home. And, uh, and yeah, we, when I exited the company, we were able to cut the check and I was able to email somebody that knew him and then he put me in touch and my and the subject was like, I've got another check for you, but I got two more zeros on it. <laughs> so yeah, he was sweet. He's like, I go, my only ask is I just hand it to you, just hand, I'll run away again, you know, whatever. And he's like, I'm in Paris, you know, if you want to come, come over here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and then we have breakfast. Um, which I wasn't expecting. And I, you know, I, t I talked to him for an hour and he's such an incredible guy, like so incredible. And then I just saw him again, um, gosh, just a couple months ago on the Virgin cruise ship, I was at a conference and I knew, I knew he was going to be there, but I knew everybody would be kind of going after him. So I just like quickly, like, I don't even know if he knew it was me. I just like quickly like fist bumped him. He was, everybody was going after him. So, it's like, um, so yeah, it was nice to see him again, just super briefly. And, and now there's another check I promised to cut. So we're, I'm working on that one now with an, an extra zero. Cause I told him that, and then he blogged about it. That's Listen, one, first of all, that's just amazing. It's amazing because he's like, yeah, why don't you just come to Paris? You're like, yeah, sure. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Here's your check. I, but there has to be a feeling. You talked about the visual, visualization, $100,000. You hit that mark. You set that goal. You hit that mark. Tell me what that feels like, because that that's some stuff that's just, especially now that you're able to move on to the to that next goal and you're almost there. That moment when it happened. That's so, I, you know, and I bought my dream car, which was right. I had this rule. I was afraid. Maybe this is a female thing. I don't know. I felt guilty paying that much for my dream car. I thought when I'm driving and I'm going to be guilt, like, I don't know, it's a lot of money. And I feel like that money could be best served elsewhere. It's kind of, and I have such a great life. So I'm like, oh shit. I, my rule was that car couldn't be more than a hundred grand. It's like right under it. So I, honestly, that helped tremendously. It's weird. It was kind of like, well, I don't feel guilty about buying this car now because I just, donated to charity um what the, it's so counterintuitive and it did take me you know I've, I've learned this years ago luckily um the more you give the more you get there's no doubt in my mind no, you, yeah you guys are shaking your head yes um it sounds crazy and like counterintuitive like how is that possible there's no my life since that you know this all went down 2017 that's when I exited the spa and my life is so idyllic, like insanely magical, travel the world, live where I want, do what I want. It's crazy. how, And I know it's because I give. Um, so it's just a great feeling of like, I get to do what I love. I get to live a cool life. I get to donate and help others that really, really need it. And Virgin Unite, if you guys want to read, anybody want to research listening, you know, they, they have so many different causes and the CEO of Virgin, Virgin Unite, she was actually with the three, it was the three of us at the breakfast and they're like, Christine, where do you want to put this hundred grand? How do you want to distribute it? You know, they help seniors, they help people in Africa. They help. I go, guys, you guys are the experts wherever you see fit. Like I'm not on the ground, like seeing where it's needed. Mm -hmm. Um, 
whatever you guys would do, I, I totally trust you guys. So yeah, it's a good feeling. Bravo. Christine, I know you have to run. We normally ask three rapid fire questions. I'm going to ask you just one because I think that we want to leave our guests, our audience with one, one final piece of advice from you. What would you say to a woman who is maybe struggling in her confidence, but aspiring to something bigger? What, what piece of advice would you give her? This is going to sound interesting. So all of my mentors, all the people I follow online are men. Now that I think about it, um, I think you almost have to start listening, you know, those pod. Yeah. Almost every single one of them. It's so crazy. Even all my coaches, even all my mentors, because I think then you'll, it, it's kind of a hack on shifting and getting that, that kind of mindset just automatically because yeah, again, they just, they have more confidence naturally and they go for things they are more driven. They're more, I, I, you know, there's a ton of reasons, I guess, why, you know, maybe men excel better than female. And let me also say this to everybody listening. There is nothing wrong. And I just spoke with a, one yesterday that has a really great profitable business, small. So she's like, oh, it's so small, but she's a stay at home mom. She only works, you know, 10 hours a week. She's making six figures. I'm like, bravo. I was like, you're like, please don't, you know, everybody listening, there's, it's totally cool to have a lifestyle business. Doesn't need to be multi-million dollars. You're a stay-at-home mom. You're a great wife. You're, you know, you're superwoman. You're trying, you know, you're doing everything. So I would say that too, because I think there's people listening that start feeling like, oh, well, I need to make, grow a big company. Not everybody does. And I think lifestyle businesses are amazing and just designing your life to where you can be home. And our team, out of six of us, three of them have all new um, babies under the age of 12 months, three out of six of them. And they work from home and Kessa, like she, you know, he's in the crib next to her and as we're on a zoom meeting. And I, I love, love, love that. I'm like, this is so cool that you get to work and be a mom and he's not in daycare. It's it, you have to find what works for you and make it work for you. It's not what that person's dream is. It's what is your dream? What are you looking for? to do. Christine, it has been wonderful sitting here talking with you. We thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to join us today. Um, it's, it's been, it's been wonderful. It's been so much fun. You're, you have so much knowledge and uh, guys look further into her and look up Virgin Unite. There's a lot of, of wonderful stuff um, that they are doing there. But that is going to do it for us here on the Think Tank of Three. Please remember to subscribe. That is how we share that love. Spread it around to uh, all of your friends and loved ones because we could definitely use it here. Thanks so much. That'll do it for this episode of Think Tank of Three. <laughs>